Hello everyone and welcome to this video where I'm going to walk you through the process of putting together a Princeton River replica. I built this amp for myself and it was actually my first time building an amplifier cabinet and the second time where I was putting amplifier electronics together. So please be indulgent. Also this is a two-part series video because it was just too long to make it under 15 minutes. So let's start off with the cabinet. So I found a bunch of pine wood in my basement and it actually happened to be exactly the thickness I needed it to be for the cabinet. So even though it's not the nicest looking wood, I thought that's what I'm going to use. So I cut all the parts to size and I made sure to keep a little extra length in case I needed to trim off the finger joists at the end. So here's a little clip where I'm cutting those finger joints on the table saw and using a little uh, sliding jig that I made. Um, the blade is a standard blade, about I'd say 2.5 millimeters thick, uh, which forces me to do uh, several steps to cut one finger. So you can see I do one edge, the other, and then I clean up the middle over the blade and I repeat the process until I'm done with the whole width of the piece I'm cutting. And you can see also on the back, we're going to see right now, that there's a little laser cut template that is enabling me to locate the joints properly. And it makes the whole process actually fairly easy. Um, I never made bulk joints before and I was able to make it work uh, without too much effort. Uh, so it's a bit time consuming, I think about five minutes to cut uh, one piece. Um, but I think the result is way worth the effort. And here's a dry assembly. I didn't push the finger joints all the way because they were a bit tight and I was worried I was not gonna be able to take them out. And then I put both sides on a sled to allow me to cut um, the front bevel, which is about three degree angle. So that went for the table saw, no problem there. And then it was about time to start the glue job. To speed up the gluing process a little bit, I made combs that allowed me to uh, spread the glue evenly and also much faster in between the finger joints. So I put the glue in there and then uh, I glue up the finger joints. Then it was time to put on the first side on the bottom which went quite smoothly and you can see I'm using also this little comb to put pressure uh, everywhere that's needed and making sure to keep uh, a 90 degree angle. Gluing on the second side, and that was still when things were going fine. But then the hardest part is obviously when you have to assemble two joints, uh, two sides at the same time. And I ran into some issues because my finger joints were really, really tight. Um, and I got stuck in the middle of the glue job because the glue had dried and I was not all the way in. So I had to use this heat gun, which heated up the glue and actually uh, re-enabled the joint to move a little bit until it was fully seated. Uh, and I was, it was actually a bit of a relief when I saw it moving again and going all the way down. And here are the four sides assembled together. Looks a bit rough. Uh, I put some sawdust to fill in the gaps and also masking tape to prevent the glue from squeezing out too much uh, and having too much cleanup to do. But uh, once we'll clean that off, it'll be, it'll be fine. Then it was time to cut the second bevel, the one that's about 25 degrees um, on the control for the control panel. And you can see I'm using sacrificial pieces uh, so I don't tear out the um, pine. Setting up the table saw to 25 degrees and then running that a few times through the table saw until I get the proper depth. Took a few tries, but in the end I got it all right. Here's what it looked like uh, after that bevel cut, starting to look like an amplifier, uh, but still more work to do. So the next step was to trim off those finger joints and I used the table saw in combination with the sander to make a nice and smooth surface on the ends. And once that was done, I could start with the router to make the roundovers. 
I didn't want to take uh, too much uh, on the first pass, so I used a quarter of an inch deep uh, round of a bit at first, and then I switched to a uh, half inch. And as you can see here, I mounted a little plate that is allowing me to control the router a little better and stay perpendicular to keep the roundovers more consistent. That worked out quite fine and uh, the roundovers look great. I'm really happy with them. And you can see here how the amplifier already looks a lot more uh, sophisticated. Then I moved on to the studs that are gonna hold the front baffle and the back panels. Um, I just glued them on, tightened that with clamps, and also added a few nails uh, so they wouldn't go anywhere. I got the router out again then um, to route out the hole for the speaker in the baffle. And you can see I'm using a laser cut template as a guide. I got a nice uh, circular hole and then I had to make little spacers that are gonna go on uh, this baffle to prevent the grill cloth from vibrating against the wood. So you can see uh, I put a few pieces for the planer, then cut them to size, and then I just glued them on and stapled them to the baffle. And then the last parts I needed to make were the back panels, and fortunately to do that I only had 12 millimeter work birch play with to work with. So I first got it to size roughly and then ran that through the planer to bring it down to six millimeters thickness. It's a bit of a shame to waste so much nice birch plywood but that's all I had on hand. So here they are and then I roughly draw the outline that I need to cut on the top panel, cut it out on the bandsaw and uh, finishing it I think with sandpaper. So now that the panels were cut, I needed to make the holes so I could mount them to the rest of the cabinet. And you can see I'm using shims to estimate the thickness of the tolex that will be there later. And then drilling the holes, uh, that's quite straightforward. And then repeating the process for uh, the upper back panel. Then I'm using a few uh, sacrificial pieces to guide uh, the holes that I'm making for fixing the front baffle. Uh, so there's especially one in the back to prevent the pine from tearing out. And again, I'm using shims to locate uh, the baffle and take into account the thickness of the tolex and the grill cloth there. So here they are mounted to the cabinet and uh, yeah, it's looking good so far. Now I need to drill a few more holes, the ones for the handle. Um, first marking them with the pen and then drilling. Quite straightforward here. Uh, same process with the chassis straps, making little markings and then drilling the holes and then extra chamfers for the chassis straps. And then four last holes for the feet. Then I'm going back to my speaker baffle and I make uh, counterboard holes to accommodate for the nuts that are gonna hold the speaker. And then I put a little layer of black paint. That's just basic acrylic paint that I applied with a brush. Um, so you won't see the baffle through the grill cloth. So at that point, the woodworking is finished and you can see what it looks like before I put the tolex on. So that's without the baffle, and if I put the baffle back on, you can see that the paint job is not perfect, but it'll be enough when it'll be covered by the grill cloth. So now moving on to the Tolex job. It's not a procedure I'm not gonna go too much into detail. If you wanna learn more about it, I'd advise you to check out Uncle Dog's YouTube channel. He does a great explaining of how to put Tolex and leather it on a cabinet. Anyway, here I am uh, with my first piece uh, cut to size and then I'm putting some water-based glue on that with just a basic brush. Then uh, I prepare my piece of wood um, with masking tape and then I put down the glue and let it dry for a little bit. And I wait 
until it's tacky on both the toe legs and the wood. Then I lay down the toe legs, making sure it's nicely stretched, and I also flatten it with a little roller. Once the first side is on, then I start making a few cuts in the corners and start conforming to the shapes of my cabinet. So here it's all about making the right cuts in the right places and obviously the part that is the most difficult is the outside corners and it's going to take you a little practice before you manage making uh, nice looking corners. Anyway, here's the cabinet after I laid down the two sides, but I unfortunately forgot to take a picture um, after I had put on the top and bottom sides. So please forgive me on that one. Last part of the Tolex job, the back panels, same process, cutting the pieces to size, putting some masking tape and then gluing it on. Now moving on to the grill cloth, not too many pictures of that, unfortunately, but it's pretty straightforward. You cut your sheet to size and then you staple it on, which might require quite many staples. Eventually, if you're methodical, you might get there. And you can see here on the back, I have some extra material to stretch the grill cloth again if it happens to get loose in the future. Last part on this cabinet uh, was to put a little sheet of aluminum. So it just held on in place with a few staples and then the handle screws and the cabinet screws will do the rest of the job to hold it in place. So there we go, that's one cabinet completed. Um, again, it was my first time putting a cabinet together and even though there are a few imperfections here and there, uh, I'm quite pleased with the result. I'm also happy with the choice of colors. I think it's a little different from what Fender usually does with their black amplifiers. Anyway, that was part one and I'll hopefully see you in part two where we're gonna assemble the electronics. Cheers guys and thanks for watching.